farm at homesteads as well as farms, but there are three primary enterprises here, pastured poultry, so meat, chickens, and we have pastured eggmobiles producing eggs and a no-dig market garden. This farm is half forestry and half pasture. So we run market gardens on 1,500 square meters. We run about 1,200 laying hens typically and four or 5,000 meat chickens in a year. So a small, mixed, diverse farm where we can start to close nutrient cycles and also provide a full human diet, which has been really important to us. Well, I went to agriculture school when I was 18 to study organic horticulture and crop production in the UK at an uh, agriculture school there. And I left there with a lot more questions than answers. So I embarked on a, a longer global trip looking for people that had different solutions. It took quite some years to find really working examples and I found it very hard to find people willing to share data like numbers and facts and figures. And so that's become a key part of this farm, is creating a place that shares the sort of data that I wish I had had access to when I was learning. Starting a farming business is perhaps the hardest thing you could do. A lot of young people coming into this kind of business, they're growing up in a world that missed a bunch from a few generations ago. We really wanted to create a space that was open to people to come and get engaged. So we've tended towards running really long-term farmer training and quite hardcore, you know, more like farm boot camp. So we really focus on choosing enterprises here that A, are symbiotic, but B, are things that people can come and really learn about tangibly here, get enough experience to then confidently go away and set up according to their own context in their own country. So we're farming up here at 59 degrees north, so in the summer months the season comes very quickly. Spring and autumn are very short and it quickly transitions from dark cold winter to high this summer and it's quickly winter again. So frost free dates here would be like 6th of June is safe and 15th of September that frost is coming back and that could move a few weeks either direction. So it's a fast and furious growing season here. So we work long hours in the summer, but we're also complemented with six months of basically me here for one hour a day, you know, collecting eggs, feeding cattle, and that's my workload. We get up at six o'clock, got to open the eggmobiles, and they start laying eggs at six o'clock because the sun's been up since four. We move the cows and sheep who cut the grass in front of the eggmobiles and we time their interactions so that they receive all the fly larvae from the cow manure and follow them around the pasture like that. Then we move all the boiler chickens and that's quite a big job and then we'll basically spend the rest of the day in the market garden. Market gardens take a lot of hours so that makes up the majority of the workload here. So the gardens here are a no dig setup, so we put wood chip down between our beds and big load of compost in the beginning. These beds are built straight on top of pasture with perennial weeds and things. We do no dig because it leads to less weeds, less water, and using this wood chip for pathways, it actually helps us soak up excess water. And what we find is that means you're walking around in a clean garden. It means we minimize washing of veg, like salad mixes that we cut with the green service, that we don't need to wash them because there's no dirt bouncing up on the leaves. And any time we can minimize washing, we're maximizing shelf life. And it's part of a marketing thing too. Like our farm looks beautiful and it's presentable and it's the first thing a customer sees when they come into the farm. We are driving a very high level of economy in a very small space, in a very short growing season, in the middle of nowhere. So we managed to shift about a quarter of a million euros products in a six month production, which we then sell throughout the year, like meat products and eggs. We're able to turn over the value, more than the value of the farm and the investments we put in the farm every single six month season that we run. Having a broad product portfolio really helps. Like when we have fresh chickens for sale in the summer, it's much easier to sell vegetables. And I remember those words of Joel Salatin, it's much easier to find 100 customers that will spend $1,000 with you than to find 1,000 customers that will spend $100. And that's certainly my experience of running a mixed, diverse fund.
We grow masculine mix, spicy Asian greens and arugula. It's one of the most profitable crops we grow. On a little 10 meter long bed that's 30 inches wide, we're getting 40 kilos in 42 days. So that's a net of about 500 euros on a tiny little bed. And that used to be painstaking work. We would cut it with little serrated knives on the hands and knees. And that takes 25 minutes to do well. And, and what we found with the greens harvesters, that takes about two minutes flat. That's definitely a game changer for anyone growing greens or microgreens at any kind of scale. I really inspired to spend time in nature watching the ecosystem here develop. I'm totally motivated by feeding my family amazing food. That's why I wanted to build a farm. I decided that at about 15 years of age. I knew I wanted to bring up kids and raise the family around amazing food. We've become a little island that nature's moving back into because we're not sprayed and we're not bare ground. We're, we're creating a habitat whilst producing amazing diverse food and that, that inspires me a lot when I wake up every day.